Today my son is going to fix his USB headset. It cost him a lot of money so he didn't want to buy a new one and he has agreed to let me video it and as long as I supply the narration. So you can see what's going on. The cable's broken, the plastic's just rotted away and so what we've done is we've ordered a, a uh, USB cable of the same type and we are going to open this up. This is something new to both of us So we're experimenting a little bit. We've made mistakes, but we'll show those and we'll show so you don't have to make them Okay, well, that's it. Let's go He has already removed the ear pad and you want to do this operation on the side with the wire We started to do it on the wrong side <laughs> and Yeah so He's just going to remove the screws and uh, that's pretty much it. So I will uh, just keep quiet and let you guys watch. Now the wires are short and fragile on this thing, so you want to be careful when you remove it. Don't give it a big yank because the wires that attach to the speaker are uh, very thin. We'll show those in a minute. Yeah, as I noted, you want to open this carefully because those wires he's pointing to are very fragile and you don't want to yank them loose. So what we've done is we've opened this up we took a photograph and we also made notes about the order of the wire. You can see starting on the left, you got a red wire, a white wire, a green wire, a small black wire, and he's pointing to a big black wire. Um, the USB cable we ordered was just a plain USB cable. So the colors may or may not be the same. I was prepared to use my own meter to test which cable was which. So anyway, again, uh, need to make careful note about which one is which and uh, that will come up uh, later when we replace the old one. We ordered a USB cable that has USB-A on one end and the other one doesn't really matter. What we wanted was one with a, a tough jacket like this, a cloth jacket. And uh, again, we're just going to snip off the end we don't use. Um, yeah, so we wanted the USB-A um, and now it's just time to remove the other end and uh, hope for that we got the wiring that we need. We already bared off the wire and we thought we bared off a lot, but it turns out we needed a lot more uh, for reasons I'll show you later. We got the three colors we need. We got the red, white, and green, and we have a thick black and a thin black wire in the original, and we don't have that in the new. We have the five wires, but the, uh, one, the grounds are not uh, insulated. We're going to have to shrink wrap those later. We have enough wires to do the job, so uh, we're okay. Now it's time we take care of the wires internally. There's this, uh, the strain reliever at the bottom. It actually untwists. It doesn't just like pull out. It appears to be a little bit helical, so it kind of unscrews. Uh, making note of the wires, we've got, uh, you know, the red, white, green, thin black, thick black, and then we're just going to go in and cut them. We're going to leave enough of the old wire so that we can see the uh, color, and then we'll just replace the little stubs that are left one by one with the new wire. And they're being a little bit uncooperative, especially the big thick wire. But... Yeah, so we're just going to cut them off again, leaving a little bit of a, the color left on the old wire so that we can uh, easily just uh, replace them while we're soldering. This is the old cable. We just took it out and you can see that the thin green or the thin black and the green wire wrap around the red and white. And I think they're trying to do an RF choke because that is certainly not enough for wire retention. And the reason we bared off too little cable originally was we did not count on that knot going around the red and white. We have fed the new cable into this strain relief uh, lock and it turns out that we don't have enough wire because 
uh, we didn't count on the fact that we have to wrap the thin black wire and the green wire around the white and red wires. So yeah, we ended up pulling this out and uh, redoing it. Uh, we're also gonna have to shrink wrap it. So all of this had to be redone. But again, this is kind of a warning uh, to you not to make that same mistake. Give yourself enough uh, cable and wire to work with so you don't end up redoing it. This is a precautionary tale. We got the wires in place. We have them shrink wrapped. Um, yeah, the problem is that we uh, didn't put the lock in place first and you can't pull those wires back through. Um, but we're going to go ahead and knot it and uh, yeah, so we uh, kind of got out of sequence on this. Also, I wish that we had uh, put tape around the, the cloth jacket. You can see it's starting to fray and that's very useful later in making strain relief. Okay, so here we have the, uh, the thin black and the green wrapped around the white and red. But yeah, we, uh, we really, really needed to have that uh, lock strain reliever on there first. So yeah, don't make this mistake. Um, yeah, and we uh, had to remove the shrink wrap and the knot to get it back through the, uh, the lock strain reliever. Here we uh, have redone it. We uh, put the uh, wires back in place, did the shrink wrap and knotting, and it looks pretty good. Uh, thick and thin wires, yeah, are both shrink wrapped. Um, and you can see that the thin black and the green wire are shorter because of the knot. And we'll get a little closer and take a look at that. There you can see that it's actually knotted around there. It's not just a wrapping. Okay, and then we're gonna put the whole thing in place and start the soldering. We have the uh, wires and the lock strain in place. We, that, that's that twist lock. We should have shown that. Um, now we're gonna replace the lock retention screws. That's something we didn't show removing them. Um, and there's the first one, and then we're gonna do the second one. And then that is followed up by checking the wires and then we'll go in there with a soldering iron next and we'll replace each wire one by one with the new wire of the same color. We're ready to start soldering. We're going to plan on how we route our wires to make sure they don't like tangle uh, over each other uh, and making it really hard to work on later. So one by one. So we're getting that routing done and we're starting out with the, the big, uh, the thick black uh, wire, which is the D ground, digital ground. And then we're just going to replace them one by one. We're not going to show all that. We'll just start with the first one. And then we check to make sure we don't have any uh, solder between the, uh, the different connections, which would be bad. So we start with the, uh, the D ground and then we go across. Uh, the original soldering on some of these were so bad I couldn't tell. I thought the red and the white wires were actually joined together, but they are not. And then we checked the knot and the uh, lock. And then we did a quick test here to make sure uh, that things were working before we sealed it all back up. This is the first step in strain relief. And frankly, we're not planning on opening this thing back up again. This is, we're gonna add four or five years of life and then it's pretty much gonna be worn out. So we're putting in hot glue and you want to make sure that when you put in the hot glue that you don't keep the cover from going back on. So that's important. In each of those four slots on the gray retainer piece, we used a needle and thread to wrap the cable to that gray part. And we wrapped it several times and then we put super glue on it. And uh, yeah, that should hold it for a long time. And next we'll deal with that woven cable jacket. You can see that we have moved the mesh back up over that gray part and we tied it firmly with thread and then we covered it with white glue. It's a bit like tying a fishing lure. Now it would be nicer looking if we had taped off the woven jacket initially so it didn't fray so much, but as it is, uh, it works well. And as the glue dries, it's becoming more transparent. So does it work? Well, let's give it a try. 
fire up one of my favorite YouTube channels and here we go so it's going to be shorter yet and if you're going to use 22 wire gauge it would be only 127 turns so it's going to be uh, a smaller copper part so yeah we saved ourselves a hundred and some dollars buying a new uh, headset for the price of a few bucks for a new USB cable okay well that's it hope you found that useful and interesting in your DIY home repair projects